I'm Jeff Coleman, Associate Professor of English and Coordinator of African African Diaspora Studies. Uh, on behalf of AADS, I'd like to thank you for attending the opening exhibit for Africa and the African Diaspora in Campus Collections. We have developed a short program for you tonight uh, consisting of three speakers. It's a short program, but um, which will be followed by a reception and an opportunity for you to uh, mingle and enjoy some of the great artwork uh, collected here. Uh, the speeches will uh, provide a history for the college, history about the college, information about some of the activities planned for AADS, and uh, an accounting of some of the student contributions to the, to the exhibit. Uh, I'm proud to announce that our first speaker uh, is none other than our very esteemed president. Uh, so please join me in welcoming <laughs> uh, Dr. Jordan, Tawanda Jordan. Good evening. He caught me. On my cell phone, I was not expecting him to call my name. I felt like I was a student being caught on my cell phone when I was supposed to be paying attention to the teacher. Sorry about that. So this is an important event, perhaps the prologue to an ever-evolving story surrounding the history of St. Mary's County, and quite importantly to us, the history of St. Mary's College of Maryland. I always speak about the importance of community and by extension, collaboration. Tonight's event represents a wonderful collaboration between the Boyden Gallery and the Africa and African Diaspora Studies Program. Welcome to the official opening of the Boyden Gallery's Africa and the African Diaspora in Campus Collections exhibit. I will say that for us to be in a gallery, with all this creativity around us, seems to me that title could have been a little bit more creative, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, next time. This exhibit marks the kickoff to the college's recognition of Black History Month. The exhibit features objects held in campus collections that are relevant in teaching and learning about Africa, the African diaspora, and African-American culture and experience. So I would like to thank all of you for coming out today, whatever day of the week it is. And those of you who are from our inner community here on campus, and those of you who are from all over the county, members of our Arts Alliance and such, who are here to support this event. St. Mary's College has such a rich history. We are honored to have with us this evening Elizabeth Walker the college's first African-American student. So Ms. Walker's story is a fascinating one, and you see her right now, she's a humble woman. I'm proud to know you. And I appreciate all that you stood for when you came to this college. I think that those of you who are young and haven't had the opportunity, or those of you who are older and have not had the opportunity, you should talk to her about her journey and her experience at St. Mary's College. As I recall, and I could have this story wrong, because I'm getting up on age right now, a white woman in the community got your application through the process here but the administrators didn't even know that you were black when they admitted you. And it was your grit and determination were primary in getting you through the college curriculum. Yet we cannot forget the assistance of the community members, the housekeepers, the janitors, and the cooks who kept a watchful eye and protected her and her interest while she was enrolled as a student. Many things have changed at St. Mary's College since that time. One thing that has not changed is our strong sense of community. 
and our obligation, or I dare say, our privilege to take care of those who join us and espouse the St. Mary's Way. Some highlights of the exhibit include a chap book by Ms. Walker, as well as, a, as several photos capturing her involvement in the St. Mary's College community over the years. There are also creative works by students and alumni who are part of the Black Student Union. And importantly, an anonymous gift to the college, slave shackles discovered in a barn in Chaptico, Maryland which according to professor of anthropology, Julie King, appeared to date back to the 19th century. So in addition to the visual aids such as the shackles that help us to better understand black history in this country, the college has been working to uncover its historical connections to slavery. When the shackles were brought to my office to see, I could not bring myself to touch them. That part of black America's history, although it can be colored with stories of resilience and strength, ingenuity and faith, is a dark period that became very real, real and personal when those shackles were unveiled to me in my office. It awakened questions in me and sparked a sense of wanting, wanting to know more about my family's history in these United States wanting to know more about the history of this institution over which I preside. We're pleased to have Kent Randall, the St. Mary's College archivist, and his family with us this evening. Based on an analysis of tax records, historical ads, and census data, Kent has expanded our knowledge about the college's connection to slavery in the mid-1800s, when we were designated the female seminary. You should talk to Kent because his, I call him the Sherlock Holmes of St. Mary's College. But his research and his journey in making that connection to our past, that past that we don't talk about, that past that many of us had questions about and we didn't dare ask them. He's now done quite a bit of discovery and he has some answers for you and you should go over there and look at that exhibit when you get a chance. Our nation's connections to slavery are diff difficult to grapple with. But history teaches us that every moment can be a learning experience. Although we cannot go back and change the past, we can use hard lessons from history to guide our collective path towards the future. As a college community that values inclusive diversity for all, it is important that we recognize the contributions of underrepresented groups to our college to this nation, to this state. There could not be a more opportune time for us to unveil this exhibit than during Black History Month. And fostering a community that values inclusion, diversity, and equity is a vital part of what makes us the Honors College of Maryland. I'm grateful to members of our community who are committed to uncovering and preserving the history of the college and the county. Awareness and preservation of history is so important for it is only when we are one with our past that we are whole. Throughout Black History Month, let us continue to engage in conversations about our past while also looking to celebrate our present and aspiring to better things in the future. Thank you. Thanks, President Jordan. Uh, for placing the college's uh, relationship to slavery in historical context, and for always uh, addressing the college community with humility and humanity, always. Um, I'd also like to thank my colleagues in, the, in AADS uh, for conceptualizing this event and the exhibit. Speaking of the exhibit, I, I, I owe many people sincere gratitude for making tonight and the exhibit possible. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Kristen Cash. Kristen Ka Cash, over here. <laughs> Kristen made the idea for the exhibit a reality, 
Uh, we approached Kristen, BSUN President uh, Jordan, in early October uh, with the idea for an exhibit, and after several meetings and email exchanges, Kristen uh, conducted the necessary research and legwork required uh, for the installation. She located artwork, documents, publications, and artifacts from the St. Mary's College of Maryland Fine Art Collection, uh, from Library and Archives, and from Historic St. Mary's City, as well as creative work by students and alumni affiliated with the Black Student Union. With these works in hand, she visualized and installed this magnificent exhibit before us, uh, and we have an opportunity, you will have the opportunity to browse the exhibit once this program ends. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thanks, Kristen. Uh, You know, I, this is my first time working with Kristen, but one thing I, I learned from working with her was is, is that she's very humble and she did not want me to uh, give her much credit for this, uh, but she deserves it. Um, instead, you know, she wanted me to make sure I thank the following people. Uh, Kent Randall, the college, college arch archivist. Uh, Silas Hurry, curator for collections, curator of collections. Uh, Historic St. Mary City, uh, Regina Faden, uh, Director of Historic St. Mary City, Pamela Mann, Research Instruction and Outreach uh, Librarian, Crystal Worrell, uh, we'll hear from Crystal uh, shortly, uh, Nina Katz, and members of the Black Student Union, especially the exec board. Also, Sel Selwyn Ramp, the uh, exhibition preparator, uh, pre uh, pre uh, and Emily McGinnis and the Boyden Art uh, Gallery staff. Uh, thanks all of you for uh, your help with this project, and thanks for anyone we have unintentionally uh, overlooked. Uh, we tried to go through the names several times, and I think we, we covered everyone. All right, so when, when AADS conceived this uh, event and the exhibit, we had four objectives in mind. Uh, first, we wanted to help the campus community uh, celebrate Black History Month. Second, we wanted a welcoming, aesthetically pleasing venue for the community to learn more about the college's history from President Jordan. Third, we wanted to have at least one joint venture this semester with the, uh, the fabulous members of Black Student Union. And fourth, we wanted to highlight some of our plans for contextualizing the history of St. Mary's Female Seminary and St. Mary's County in the classroom and on campus. And we wanted to accomplish all of, the, all of this in the spirit of embracing our collective institutional history for the sake of better understanding the place we inhabit and for honoring the progress we have made as an institution. Quite often when I think about teaching certain aspects of American history, especially unpleasant episodes such as slavery, I'm reminded of, of a poem, reminded of a poem by my former colleague Lucille Clifton. The poem goes, I am accused of tending to the past as if I made it, as if I sculpted it, with my own hands. I did not. This past was waiting for me when I came, a monstrous unnamed baby. And I, with my mother's itch, took it to breast and named it history. She is more human now, learning languages every day, remembering faces, names, and dates. When she is strong enough to travel, on her own, beware, she will. The opening line, I am accused of tending to the past, speaks volumes for anyone who has ever been asked about the value of discussing slavery, especially during Black History Month, or been accused of dredging up historical ugliness for the sake of sowing seeds of resentment or division. But as Lucille's poem, but as Lucille writes, this past was waiting for us when we arrived. Furthermore, the poem encourages us to tend to the past, and even warns us that if we do not tend to the past, the past may return and tend with us. So, tend to the past we shall. Next academic year, AADS will offer two classes, two cross-system classes that should help students better understand and appreciate the history of St. Mary's City and St. Mary's County. First, in the fall, Adriana Brodsky will teach a lower division methods and skills course in history. While the class itself is not new, 
Professor Brodsky's approach to the class will be new in the fall. She will turn her attention to slavery in Southern Maryland, and in doing so, she will help strengthen the skills students need for historical reading, thinking, and research. And in the process, students will be exposed uh, to invaluable archival mater materials pertaining to the institution of slavery in Southern Maryland. Likewise, during the spring semester of 2018, a, a year from now, professors Iris Ford and Julie King will teach an upper division seminar in anthropology uh, centered on slavery in St. Mary's City, including, of course, the grounds of what is now St. Mary's College of Maryland. Professors Ford and King will also broaden their scope at times to cover St. Mary's County and the greater region in order to provide historical and cultural context for their classroom discussions and assignments. Both classes are still under construction, and I am sure, but I am sure, uh, and I'm sure they will be tweaked numerous times before they debut in the fall and spring, respectively. But if you're a student interested in or curious about either course, please feel free to approach the professors with questions, or, or you can approach me as well. With the courses, uh, while the courses are designed to help students discover new ways of viewing the college and the region's history, the inaugural AADS Fall Symposium is expected to help the entire campus community, the entire campus community, region and state, come together for discussions about slavery. Like the courses, the, symp the symposium is under construction, but it's tentatively scheduled for Saturday, September 23rd, and will consist of 20-minute papers paper sessions by AADS faculty members during the day, and a keynote address from a guest speaker during the evening. Professors Gary Denny, Liza Giganto, Julie King, and George McLeod are currently slated to present papers. In addition, Kent Randall, our college archivist, uh, and as I discovered this morning, um, a Woody Guthrie uh, enthusiast, <laughs> will delay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We'll, we'll, uh, we'll deliver a presentation as well. Others, myself included, will probably pr participate uh, in some form. Uh, we hope to make this symposium an annual fall event focused on a different aspect of the African diaspora each year and possibly distribute a call for local, national, and international scholars to participate in subsequent years. All right, with classes and a symposium designed to help student campus frame help the campus frame, honor, and control the narrative about the college's relationship to slavery, we will definitely honor, honor Lucille's legacy and her wishes and tend to the past. At this point, uh, I have the honor of inviting our final speaker uh, to the podium. For those of you who, who already know uh, Krista Worrell, you are familiar with the fact that she is one of the more spirited and dynamic students at St. Mary's. Uh, she's an English major and a dance minor, a D'Souza Brent scholar, a Lannan fellow, a very gifted, talented poet uh, and dancer, and, and is also president of the BSU. Uh, Crystal, I'd like for you to come to the podium and address. adjust the mic because I'm short. <laughs> um, so good evening and happy Black History Month. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to speak briefly about um, BSU's contribution to the exhibit. But first, I just want to thank Professor Coleman and Kristen Cash for working with BSU exec and a lot of um, the students that contributed to the zine because if it weren't for you guys helping us out, then we wouldn't be in here either. So thank you. Um, so the wall behind us um, has a couple of contributions from the People of Color zine, and I'm gonna introduce that um, quite quickly right now. So um, the zine came about um, last fall, well talk of the zine came about last fall um, after Nina Katz and Kate emailed myself and a couple of um, BSU exec board members um, basically surrounding um, an SGA meeting that got quite heated about um, 
a yik yak banning of the app. Um, so in the email, Nina was really upset, <laughs> and um, so were all of us. And she basically wanted to help students of color find um, a safe space to express. And she thought that one of those mediums would be through art. Um, so that's basically how um, the zine came about. It was supposed to be published at the end of last fall, but you know, school and papers and finals and stress <laughs> and all of that um, kind of um, prohibited us from doing that last fall. But it worked out fine because it came into play and now we're here in the gallery. Um, so I'm going to just read um, the intro to the zine because I think that um, it basically explains um, more of the purpose behind um, of why the zine is important. So it reads, we no longer want to feel the need to absorb what is pitiful, hate spewed, or exclusionary. We aren't asking for approval or tears, but to be recognized, not as a head count for diversity's namesake, or just to be represented in its name. Resistance has many forms, and this is just one of them, through art. Reject or accept, we are here, and we will not move. So I hope that sits with everyone in the room and that we really think about that. And pick up a zine, because they look really cool and popping. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, all right, thanks, Crystal, and, and thanks again, Dr. Jordan. All right, uh, this is pretty much the end of, of our short program. Now you can definitely uh, enjoy uh, the exhibit. There are tons of nice uh, art. Be, be sure to take it all in. Also, I assume that there's still food out there, so you can enjoy the reception as well. Uh, this is great. Uh, it's a nice mix of uh, students, faculty, staff, uh, community members. I thank you all for coming, and uh, let's all celebrate Black History Month all, all month long and all year long. Thank you very much. <laughs>